Once a giant, always a giant. For me, it's only a giant. What's going on YouTube, Biggie546? Definitely hit that subscribe button if you're new. Like the video if you like the video. And I won't tell if you click that bell. But let's go ahead and get into this. So there was a rumor a couple of days ago and I'm not gonna put too much stock into this rumor because I only saw it on a couple of accounts and things can always be smoke even if they got it from some source they believe to be reliable. Things can always be fake. Now I have seen KJ Wright link to the Giants in the last couple of days and I've also seen him link to the Chiefs. I've seen him linked to the Bengals and then possibly going back to Seattle. KJ Wright is obviously one of these, you know, I guess you want to say this generation or I guess just the past generations, best linebackers, off ball linebackers. He was a 4-3 outside linebacker. He's been that pretty much his whole career. But someone on Twitter did show me that he has lined up in some wide nine sets as sort of a pass rushing outside linebacker. So maybe he will be that in our defense. But I highly doubt it. I still believe that they will use him as mostly an off-ball linebacker. So he probably will be next to Blake Martinez, which I have no problems with. He's more of a covers guy than Martinez. Uh, Martinez is probably a, a little bit better of a blitzer than him. And Martinez at this point in their careers is probably the better player. But having him beside Blake Martinez will be amazing. Now, I don't know how much he's going to cost to come to the Giants or to, to go anywhere. He seems like he's still a good player. He's coming off of an 86 tackle season, I think. 86 tackles, uh, 132 the year before that. So he's not that much removed from being a Pro Bowl level linebacker. And then I'll go back to he's never been a big sacks guy. The most sacks he's ever gotten was four. I do not see him as an every down, three, four outside linebacker. I just don't see it. But he has been used in that way, so he can be versatile in this defense. Um, KJ Wright was a, a big part of the Legion of Boom. I mean, the Legion of Boom was mostly that secondary. And then you add on Bobby Wagner and then KJ Wright too. Without those linebackers covering underneath and doing their job, the Legion of Boom could not have been that Legion of Boom. And we all know that that was supposed to be a dynasty. And Tom Brady pretty much neutralized it. And Pete Carroll not running the ball on that one or two yard line pretty much neutralized that too. So, that team was really great as far as that defense goes without them, of course, losing that momentum of uh, not winning that Super Bowl because they didn't give the ball to Marshawn Lynch. But K.J. Wright, even after that, has been a very elite level kind of player. Uh, I don't have his PFF stuff in front of me, but they're usually decent at getting in the ballpark of where a player's been playing. Usually they are. But um, K.J. Wright is still, I think, better than what we have at linebacker besides Blake Martinez. I think he's probably a starting caliber linebacker if you want to say that there's two to three starting linebackers, off-ball linebackers in the on every team. In the league, you multiply that by 32, you're probably at about 70-something players, 80 players. He's definitely in that range of, of linebackers. I would say that he's probably in the top 32. Maybe, you know, maybe I, I would say he's still in the top 32 linebackers, but I just don't see the Giants having the money to pay him right now. I really don't because I think if if the Chiefs are looking at him, then he probably would take less money to go to the Chiefs. Even the Seahawks, he probably would take less money to go back to the Seahawks because those teams have proven quarterbacks. They have proven staffs. All people, you know, all of these guys have won Super Bowls or at least won one. So for him to come to the Giants or the Bengals, I think he's going to request more. And I don't think the Giants are in good shape as far as cap space because we're not going to do a long-term deal with them if we were to bring him in. It would have to be a one-year deal, I'm thinking, because he's kind of on the older side. And then there's talks of us bringing in Adrian Peterson. I think Adrian Peterson is going to probably take the veterans minimum. But if, you know, they, they, it's possible to fit him in. I mean, we probably have to rework some other people's contracts, but it's possible um, I don't think KJ Wright is going to take the veterans minimum like AP will, but it's worth looking into because bringing him there, it just really solidifies the weaknesses last year. What were it? Second corner, pass rusher, second linebacker. Uh, I believe that we've already solved that second linebacker with Reggie Ragland, but that makes it even better adding in a KJ Wright. Of course, some of those back of the end roster linebackers are probably on the outs 
if K.J. Wright comes to the team. But that's just football. You bring in the best players that you can. Uh, and then, you know, pass rusher, I think we, we, we're we starting to solve that with Aziz Jalari and hoping that, you know, Zemini Cricket so Lorenzo Carter can step up on the other side. Then if you solve that linebacker spot and, you know, make that a serious strength, that really makes the defense that much better. And I think if the Giants do that, they, it really shows how serious they are as far as adding things to the defense. Of course, you don't want to add too many players because you want that chemistry to be there. But K.J. Wright, adding him cannot be a mistake. He's, he's a really good player, even if he's on the downside at this point. But if they're looking at him, I would look at it. You know, I would I would consider it. I would bring him in the workout. I would think about it. If he's talking about numbers that make any kind of sense, you probably want to jump on that. Uh, would I take him and not get AP? I probably would. I probably would say that he might be a little bit more valuable than AP because he'd probably pay a lot more. But then, then you look at it, we have the real peppers there. We have Reggie Ragland there. We have a ton of other guys that can play beside Blake Martinez. And Jabril Peppers does play that nickel backer. So how much is KJ Wright going to be on the field? Because he's probably going to get paid, what, five, six million dollars? How much is he going to be on the field to justify that and to justify having to push more money back? Is it really worth it? So, I mean, just think about Tate Crowder made those couple of plays, but our second linebackers are really pretty much only on the field when we're in a, a base defense, uh, when we're in a 3-4 or the few times that we play 4-3. And the nickel package, as I said, is usually Jabril Peppers out there. Sometimes you'll see Tate Crowder, sometimes you'll see Devontae Downs, but it's usually Jabril Peppers out there, and I don't think they want to take any snaps away from Jabril Peppers. So it is, it's a lot to think about. It's a lot of moving parts, and if you start to bring in so many players that sort of fit the same role, you're going to have to start getting rid of people uh, making to, to make space for the others. I mean, you, you're going to have McKinney out there. You're going to have Julian Love out there. You got a lot of safeties who can play that linebacker kind of role. Even Logan Ryan did it in some spots. And then, of course, as I said, you got uh, Reggie Raglan. You got Cam Brown. You got um, Carter Coughlin. You got Carter Coughlin, who did a lot, great, a lot of great things from that inside linebacker position last year, too. And then Tate Crowder, everybody's rooting for him. So where's the space for K.J. Wright? And if he's there, where's the space for those other guys? Uh, all of that being considered, I mean, if you bring in KJ Wright, you're definitely going to be making a good move. Um, why not? But anyway, this is the slowest part of the season. So there's going to be the content is going to kind of be spaced out. Look for some NFL generalized kind of videos. It's just, you know, what I'm going to dive into, at least at this point of the offseason. And then, of course, I do that a lot more during the season. But there's going to be some more general NFL content that I'm going to talk about. Uh, I'm happy the first, you know, the first couple of videos are going to be about the young quarterbacks going into their second year. Uh, I'm going to have a video coming out a little bit later too about Daniel Jones and Kenny Galladay and their connection, uh, what I expect from them. Maybe doing a little bit of comparison between Eli and Plax, uh, and then some other guys who have gotten that number one receiver should be fun to talk about. But uh, look for those kind of that kind of stuff coming up soon. I uh, also have a video about some of the draft prospects this year, like Kyle Pitts, uh, Jamar Chase, all of those guys. But stay tuned for that. Uh, you guys let me know what you think about KJ Wright. If you made it this deep into the video, come on, just hit the subscribe button. I make Giants content primarily, draft content secondarily. And during the season, I'm going to be doing a lot of reacting to pretty much most of the NFL games and everything NFL. So if you made it this deep, go ahead and join the deep.